สวัสดีครับสวัสดีผู้ชมทุกท่านนะครับวันนี้เราก็จะมาทำคอนเทนต์พิเศษกันนะครับวันนี้จะเป็นการสัมภาษณ์นะครับคุณอันโตนิโอเมเซ่นะครับผมเจ้าของแบรนด์เมเซ่ออดิโอนั่นเองนะครับผมซึ่งวันนี้นะฮะก็จะมีพี่ติดนะครับจากทางเดโค2000นะครับมาทําหน้าที่ในเป็นพิธีกรร่วมด้วยนะครับผมอ่ะเ,เดี๋ยวขออนุญาตส่งต่อให้พี่กิจก่อนเลยดีกว่านะครับว่าเราจะมาพูดคุยอะไรเกี่ยวกับคุณอันโตนิโอเมเซ่กันบ้างนะฮะครับผมก็ในโอกาสอันดีครับที่คุณอันโตนิโอได้มาเยี่ยมชมทางด้านเด็กโคและมั่นคงคนะครับผมเราก็มีโอกาสที่คิดว่าเออเราไม่เคยได้สัมผัสเขาได้เชิญเป็นเนาะแล้วก็จะมีเรื่องราวหลายอย่างที่ต้องถามนะครับครับผมก็ก่อนจะต้องขออนุญาตเปิดก่อนเลยว่า uh, thanks for coming today with us thank you for having me so I heard that um, this is not your second time in Thailand yeah, we met before right yes yes, yes. But uh, this is our first time that we can do some content together. Yeah. So we're gonna have a lot of questions to ask. Okay. So, ตอนแรกเนี่ยก่อนที่จะรู้มาจากเมสเซ่เนี่ยปาคิดว่าเราเราเราเคยได้ยินแบรนด์นี้มาก่อนไหมเคยได้ยินในฟอรัมของต่างประเทศแล้วก็นักรีวิวของต่างประเทศอะไรอย่างเงี้ยก็เคยเห็นผ่านตามมาบ้างอะไรประมาณนี้นะครับก็ก่อนก่อนที่จะเข้ามาวางจําหน่ายที่มันคงแก๊สเจก็เคยเห็นผ่านตามมาอยู่แล้วนะครับว่าเป็นแบรนด์ที่เออมีเรื่องของการออกแบบอืดีไซน์พวกหูฟังต่างๆเนี่ยมีความพรีเมียมค่อนข้างสูงเลยนะครแต่เรื่องเสียงเนี่ยณตอนนั้นเนี่ยยังไม่เคยฟังครับผมตอนนั้นผมคิดว่าเราก็จะมาเริ่มจากประวัติของเมเซ่กันก่อนนะว่าเขาแนะนำตัวเองก่อนดีกว่านะครับเรื่องราวเป็นยังไงนะครับ before we become the Uh, distributor and dealer for the Mesa in Thailand. We already heard about your brands, but um, at that time we not really know well much. So I think it is a good time for you to um, tell us about your story and how it became the Mesa. Uh, our story starts in 2010-2011. I was uh, traveling a lot mm -hmm. with my work as a product designer and. Uh, I was using headphones a lot of the time uh, during uh, work, during commuting, and I uh, really wanted to have some headphones that I felt that I can connect to, like a personal cherished item. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really find anything in the market that seemed to have this uh, quality of, uh, of soul. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, because I was a product designer, I thought, well, I'll try to make it. And I started getting parts uh, from different suppliers and, and kind of DIYing at home, trying to make things. My, my concept was to make something out of wood. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really difficult to actually do it because to start a new product, there's need for a lot of investment in tooling, in the materials, yeah. in everything. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, designs were actually uh, using existing parts from different suppliers and putting them together, mm -hmm. and uh, those were, let's say, the experiments mm -hmm. uh, through which I learned about headphone, about mechanical assembly, sound tuning, and all that. And the the first product that is actually designed from the ground up uh, by me was the 99 Classics, which. Took two and a half years of development, and eventually it was released at the end of 2015. And um, because I, I'm not a businessman, and I didn't really follow the trends, and I really wanted to look apart, I think the 99 Classic was very attractive, specifically because it was different, and specifically because I didn't conceive it to be very efficient and have a high margin of price. Mm -hmm. So I made the product to be as good quality uh, and sturdy, as sturdy as I can. Mm -hmm. That was in my mind the goal, to make a good product, not to have enough margin in it, for example. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I didn't really know uh, how the business works, but apparently making a really good product is a very good start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it slowly took off from there. And mm -hmm. uh, It was uh, very easy to to move forward from there because um, 
anybody who saw the product in the high-end headphone field saw that there's certain qualities in it and mm -hmm. you know we paid attention to 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 all the aspects of a headphone including the touch and feel including the the ergonomics which maybe sometimes some uh, companies might skip in yeah. order to put out the product fast mm -hmm. we didn't have this constraint mm -hmm. we didn't have to respond to anybody mm -hmm. because i'm a product designer i always work for customers mm -hmm. who is usually a brand mm -hmm. and i know that they they have uh, the deadline mm -hmm. and as a product designer you rarely can do your best work within that deadline, deadline so yeah. i think in many companies i think they are very good designer and very good engineer mm -hmm. but in the end the product is not as good as it could be mm -hmm. because of the deadline and the limitation of budget and the limitation of the uh, marketing department and mm -hmm. you know they, they just want to put out things fast mm -hmm. and we are different we didn't think about it in that terms mm -hmm. i just thought i'll make a product the way i want it to be Mm -hmm. And it turned into a business, although initially I didn't think it would be a business. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's a good thing how, you know, the, the great companies come from the, what we say, passion. Yeah, I think people already seen the, your passion in the products and things and stuff and, you know, and we see something strange for me, like, you know, you start from the 99 and then you become the <laughs> empyrean so uh, would you uh, tell us the story about how you transitioned from the 99 to the empyrean uh, after we launched uh, the 99 the dealers uh, the distributors we had unnaturally asked for a product which is um, not too far from 99 so you know to be in the same style but maybe a little bit below or above in cost mm -hmm. And that would be, I think, the sensible and rational decision. Mm -hmm. But because I come from an art background, art school and design school, mm -hmm. and I didn't really care too much about this business side, mm -hmm. I, I took a decision which was a lot riskier, mm -hmm. but a lot more interesting as a mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. uh, we met um, Rinaro, yeah. who is yeah. the Ukrainian company mm -hmm. that makes planar drivers. Mm -hmm. And we saw that this is a really great opportunity to do something really special. Mm -hmm. And uh, we realized it's a very big risk. We mm -hmm. put all our money into it. Mm -hmm. If it turns out bad, it's really bad <laughs> for us. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, from my point of view, I really don't want to miss such opportunity to make something without limit. Mm -hmm. And um, so we worked really hard for over two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the Empyrean came out. And I, I think I was not really concerned personally. I, I knew what I want to achieve. So mm -hmm. the vision was clear. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, we even managed to pull it together. <laughs> so yeah, this is how Empyrean was born out of uh, really the, the will to, to risk and mm -hmm. to experiment and yeah. Mm. Okay. Do you have any questions about this? It's about the way to make it like this. It's about the Empyrean. The work that you've seen in the clip video that they promote is a lot of work. ทำยากมากคือเห็นบอกว่าตัวหนึ่งเนี่ยกว่าจะทําออกมาแบบต้องใช้เวลาหลายวันให้เขาอธิบายหน่อยว่ามันต้องมีความยากขนาดไหนในการที่แบบจะทําไอตัวอย่างเงี้ยตัวเฟซเพจที่มันดูสวยอย่างเงี้ยออกมาโอเค so um, as uh, we already seen in the clip about this product is not easy to make it even is already in the line but you know you need to put a lot of resource of material and production state and process. Um, would you please um, kind of like, uh, tell us uh, about how this one is made? So um, I'll start with the frame. Yes. Uh, um, the frame is uh, uh, made of CNC by CNC from uh, aluminum blocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why I chose this is because Again, as a product designer, I pay attention and I see many times beautiful renderings of products. The, the 
main image when a new product comes out is usually a photo rendering. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then you buy the product and in your hand it rarely is as nice. Mm -hmm. It usually always that that advertising image is the best version of the product, not the real <laughs> product. Mm -hmm. And um, this is because of manufacturing technologies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to create the opposite, uh, a, an object which when you actually, after you see it in pictures and then you take it in your hand for the first time and you hold it, that you get a very big surprise. Like, wow, I see something that is even more delicate or detailed or precise than in the picture. And um, this is why we use uh, aluminum CNC. It's, it's a, obviously a very precise process, but mm. it also allows us to, to create very sharp shapes, very precise corners and edges. And uh, these things in a picture might or might not be visible, but when you take it in your hand, if you have a little bit of sense about objects, you will notice the difference, the quality of the material, the, the quality of the textures and all that. You cannot really achieve this with plastic, with injection molded materials, uh, with painted materials. It's just, it doesn't allow. So it's this sense of wonder that I wanted to transmit to the users. Because I think um, in the end you live with the product, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you buy a product and it works well and it also makes you feel uh, like it's valuable and there's a lot of passion put into it, you will be even more happy with that object, which means you will not search for another one and another one and another one because it fulfills you. Mm -hmm. It has enough different qualities Mm -hmm. Not just the sound, mm -hmm. or not just the color, or not just the comfort. Mm -hmm. I try to make it uh, as comfortable as possible, mm -hmm. as good sounding as possible, and also to have certain physical qualities that make me discover something new about it. Somehow how the light shines on it, or how some texture uh, is on the product. Uh, it's in a way my way of thinking how to make sustainable product. I don't think sustainable sustainable means to just use wood or recycled plastic. I think sustainable means to make a product that is relevant and brings you joy for five years or 10 years or 15 years. If I can make a headphone that the customer can be happy for a very long time, then the customer doesn't have to go out uh, every two years and search for a new headphone you know, drive to the shop, test a lot of headphones, spend a lot of time. That's a lot of waste if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Or if you order online, mm -hmm. every two years a new headphone, that means a lot of shipping, a lot of product, a lot of box thrown away. So I think the, the sustainable way is to make stuff that lasts, mm -hmm. basically. And, and this you can achieve if you make products that fulfill multiple senses. Mm -hmm. The eyes, the ears, the touch. Mm -hmm. ต้องบอกว่าเป็นเป็นหูฟังที่ลูกค้าสอบถามเข้ามาเยอะเพราะว่าคนหลายคนที่จะเล่นไฮเอนอะไรเงี้ยพอเขามาลองดูแบบรูปร่างหน้าตาของหูฟังอะไรเงี้ยมันก็มีส่วนช่วยในการตัดสินใจเยอะพอสมควรอะไรเงี้ยก็เลยคิดว่าเป็นเหตุผลหนึ่งที่ในช่วงปีที่ผ่านมามันก็เลยขายดีด้วยอะไรเงี้ยช่วงต้นตั้งแต่ช่วงต้นปีอะไรเงี้ยก็มีผลเยอะเพราะว่าค่ายอื่นก็ยังเป็นแบบดูแบบโบราณหน่อยอะไรเงี้ย so now we already know why the Empyrean is getting hit in Thailand from the um, Antonio air revolution. So we know now this product is not, you know, just the product that for the business, but it's created from the passion who love the sound and not only the sound, but it look, touch, everything on it. ครับผมก็ได้พอทราบเกี่ยวกับเรื่องการเป็นมาของเมเซ่ครับแล้วก็เรื่องกับโปรดักต์ตัวแฟกชิพอย่างเอ็นพีเรียนแล้วต่อไ
ขาไม่ได้อืครับเขาก็เลยต้องทํานี้เพราะฉะนั้นผมก็เลยสนใจว่าเราปฏิกรเรื่องราวของไอเอ็มเขาจะเป็นยังไงกันอ่าใช่ครับผมก็เริ่มต้นก่อนเลยอทางแบรนด์เขาจะมีทั้งหมดสามรุ่นถูกไหมที่เราเห็นกันนะครับก็จะเป็นตัวสิบสองคลาสสิกมีสองก็จะมีตัวอะไรโซโล่อะไรเฮตตาด้วยนะครับซึ่งเดี๋ยวให้คุณอันตโนโอเขาแนะนําดีกว่าว่าแต่ละรุ่นเนี่ยเขาออกแบบมาแบบไหนแล้วก็ตั้งใจที่จะจูนเสียวมาให้ออกไปทิศทางไหนด้วยครับโอเคซูเอ่อ let's talk about the IEM so right now we have the three model the twelve classic V2 the light solo and light penta um can you give us some ideas how about the behind the the design of this tree and what is the purpose of the tree and what the sound that you think it would be Uh, the entry level uh, 12 classic is actually a revival of our older model. Yeah. Uh, we discontinued it at some point because we thought the market is not interested anymore because of the, all the true wireless uh, products. Mm-hmm. But then actually people asked for it, so we make it again. Um, it's tuned in a way um, similar to the 99 classic with a warmer sound and you know uh, a pleasant, easy to to digest. Sound, let's say. Um, the the Rai Solo is uh, meant to be kind of like an entry level for audio files, mm-hmm. and we made it uh, simple compared to today's standards of in ears because now all the new in ears have a lot of technological features. Obviously, wa- noise cancelling, uh, true wireless, uh, touch controls. Uh, we we think that. While all those features might seem attractive, they're not actually a benefit to the experience of enjoying music. So we wanted to make a product that is very simple and minimal in in the sense of functionality. I personally don't have any problem with wires. I don't think wires are a problem. Uh, so I don't see why <laughs> necessarily you yeah. would want to lose the wire. But mm-hmm. that's my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rai Penta is uh, our flagship. Uh, in ear, which uh, has five drivers, it's a hybrid, and um, we also built it by CNC machined aluminum, same like the Imperian, and uh, it has a very precise chassis. Uh, also on the inside, all the sound nozzle, the the, the sound tubes are milled. Mm-hmm. But usually in IMs, what you have is uh, some uh, plastic material tubes, yeah. and often it can happen that they're not the same length. That there could be errors. The reason we wanted to have everything machined is because, from our experience, a lot of the sound quality depends not so much on the engineering, so but but on the actual execution. Mm-hmm. So you could have good engineering, but if the execution is not precise, then you will actually lose from the quality. Mm-hmm. So the way. The the sound matches the left and right side. The the way you you tuned it and you calculated to work with a certain acoustic chamber volume with a certain length of uh, uh, acoustic nozzle. So all those things you want to actually reproduce perfectly in mass production, mm-hmm. and uh, CNC does that. Obviously, it's very precise. Because if we are doing if we are การที่วัสดุสัส่วนหนึ่งอ่ะมันไปเกี่ยวข้องกับอีกส่วนส่วนใดส่วนหนึ่งเนี่ยมันจะมีผลต่อเสียงค่อนข้างเยอะส่งผลโดยตรงเลยก็เลยกลายเป็นว่ามันก็ต้องมีความพิถีพิถันต้องเลือกแมทชิ่งมีใช้เวลาในการจูนนิ่งพอสมควรแล้วความแม่นยําในการสร้างขึ้นมาเพราะความยาวของพอร์ตในหูมันเล็กอยู่แล้วอ่ะแล้วแค่แบบมันเปลี่ยนไปแค่แบบมิลหนึ่งอย่างผมเยอะนะอืใช่ไหมเพราะฉะนั้นนั่นก็คงเป็นหลักเขาเรียกว่าเคล็ดลับที่แบบเราสึกว่าเราฟังแล้วแบบเฮ้ยเสียงมันมันละเมียดละไมแล้วมันไฮเอนจิมันมีรายละเอียดครบทุกส่วนครับนะครับก็ในส่วนของตัว i อเเนี่ยเขามีแผนที่จะมีแบบเป็นช่วงราคาที่แบบราคาที่เขาเรียกไงเหมือนแบบเป็นช่วงราคาที่แบบกว้างกว่านี้อีกไหมอย่างเช่นเพราะตอนนี้ก็เริ่มต้นอยู่ที่2องพันเจ็ดเก้าสิบใช่ไหมแล้วก็เถอมาเป็น7 0 9แล้วก็โดดไป 30,000 กว่าเลยช่วงแบบหมื่นกลางๆหรือว่าแบบ 20,000 ต้นเนี่ยจะมีโอกาสที่แบบออกรุ่นใหม่มาเติมตรงนี้ไหมคำถามนะแต่โอเค let's talk about the new products in the future 
So we had talk about the IEMs because from the 12 classic Lyso and then the price is jumping up from the Lyso to the Lyso Penta. So there is, we think that there is some gaps that maybe new products will be introduced in the future. Do you think, um, do you yeah. have any plan on that? Yeah, now? for uh, for in year we will have something between the, the Rise Solo and the Penta. Um, and same for headphones between the 99 Classics and the Empyrean, mm -hmm. and maybe even above the Empyrean. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of projects which are running in parallel, and uh, some of them are maybe two, three year old, some of them are one year old. We didn't manage to launch anything last year because we still had things to refine, but right now we have in the pipeline a number of headphones that uh, will come out within this year and within next year. So. I'm quite excited actually because, uh, well, it's our babies and we take care of them and, and we work, you know, every day I work on them and uh, I really, really look forward to bring them out to see what the customers think. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any uh, true wireless projects in your pipeline? Mm -hmm. uh, we studied true wireless technology for uh, a year and a half. We keep thinking deciding and redeciding re whether it's worth doing. Uh, we decided at this point to not do it. And uh, the reason is that the control is out of our hands. From what I know working in, in this industry, and this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. is that any audio brand that is not like a technology brand mm -hmm. that does true wireless does not actually control the product. Yes. It's completely out of their control. It's mm -hmm. somebody else doing everything and controlling everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the earphone market is at this point uh, really dominated by technology companies, you know, starting from Apple, Samsung downwards, mm -hmm. and they, they, they own it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will always have the latest uh, chips, mm -hmm. the latest codecs. Mm -hmm. Everybody else will sell on design and lifestyle and brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the non-true wireless product, I think there's still a lot of uh, good potential because in reality, so far, as much as I tried, I didn't think the true wireless in-ears are really performant enough on, on the sound mm -hmm. issue. And I think for me, that's the key functionality. Mm -hmm. Everything else is uh, gimmicks like buttons and true wireless and noise cancelling. It's nice to have, but if the sound is not where you want it to be, then what's the point of all those functions? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, this is just my view and I, I mm -hmm. might be wrong mm -hmm. and yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Me, I don't know. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm ถดถอยลงไปแต่ปรากฏว่ามาปีนี้เนี่ยเราเห็นยอดขายของ <coughs> ได้เห็นพัฒนาการของโลกที่แบบว่าเอ่อเป็นอีกโลกนึงที่อยู่อาจจะอีกคนละฝ่าของทูเวเลสที่มีความสุขว่าจะสนใจค่ะเติมเข
ทั้งตัวฟูไซส์นะครับไฮเอ็นก็มีแล้วอ,อยากถามว่าเขาสนใจแบบทำที่จะทำแบบเป็นพวกแดกแอมบ้างไหมเพราะว่า <coughs> มันในยุคนี้พวกแดกแอมแบบตัวเล็กๆหรือว่าตัวแบบที่เป็นพอร์เทเบิลอ่ะมันได้รับความนิยมเยอะมากอะไรเงี้ยว่าเขาอยากมีแนวทางที่แบบจะทำบ้างไหมอะไรอย่างเงี้ยโอเค so right now um for the message we already seen the headphone in years and we just have some speculate that you might have any projects about the deck the M for those head headphone uh, we we thought about it as well we did some research um, and uh, we will not go forward at this point with any such product it's uh, yeah it's not what we think our strength is mm -hmm. so we have um, It's not our goal to make as many uh, products as possible. It's also not our goal to grow as much as possible as a business. I, I'm trying to keep a balance to make sure every product I make is relevant and it it makes us happy with mm -hmm. with it and uh, it also uh, helps the brand. You know, strengthen the brand. Mm -hmm. Not not to grow to expand, but to to grow in terms of quality and. Perception. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll stick to headphones and earphones for now. Okay. So uh, maybe it's a little bit off topic, but um, what is your deck amps that you use currently for monitoring when you do the products? Um, we have products from uh, many brands because we part we we are friends with. Um, Many of the brands, so um, we have at the office or at home different decks or DAPs or players from uh, uh, DCS to Cord to iFi, Sony, um, and uh, others. I, I'm, I'm not mentioning. I'm not thinking to favor some. Yeah. We we have many because we want to test on different uh, mm -hmm. uh, rigs. I mean, obviously, the sound is uh, influenced by each device. None of them is completely clean. So, you know, we we try the k a i n we try the Sony, then we try the Cord, and you know, and mm -hmm. then we see how it works with each one. Mm -hmm. We we know the character of each electronic component, but uh, it still has to work with all of them. Okay, ก็น่าสนใจดีว่าเขาก็ไม่ได้เทสกับยี่ห้อใดยี่ห้อหนึ่งก็เป็นตัวที่ว่าเขาคงต้องเทสกับหลายๆยี่ห้อจนกระทั่งว่าได้เสียงที่ว่าเขาน่าจะพอใจทุกตัวครับนะครับครับผมก็ให้เขาฝากหน่อยก็ได้ฝากพูดถึงแฟนคลับในไทยหน่อยก็ได้ว่าเออเดี๋ยวจะมีในส่วนของตัวหูฟังหรืออะไรก็แล้วแต่ในอนาคตกับโปรดักที่มันกําลังจะมาอะไรเงี้ยแล้วก็ปิดท้ายอะไรก็ได้โอเค so the last One is, um, do you have any things for the Messi fan in the Thailand and any new products, any plan for them? Well, first, uh, I'm really glad that we are uh, in this shop finally. m u n k o Gadget, I know for a long time that is the most important shop for headphones, and uh, I was hoping that we'll have our products here. And uh, I think starting last year we are in this store. Um, so I I'm glad that Thai people notice our brand and they uh, like it because I know the sales are pretty good. I um, I would say that probably uh, Thai customers will be happy to know that. Uh, The new products we're making will will have the same qualities and attention to detail like the current ones. We'll try to offer different pr price levels, um, and at each price level, we'll do our best to offer as much uh, value as possible. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice that we see our brand slowly growing in Thailand because uh, for me, in a way, Thailand is like my second home. I come here every. Year, my wife is Thai, and we come here to visit with our children every year, a few months, and yeah, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
So um, I think today is already a good. We got a good information. We got a good thing, good stuff about m e s s a g and we looking forward for the next year, next year. And uh, yeah, one one thing uh, I want to mention. I think it's uh, very interesting and. Uh, Actually, it's very important decision that we made within our company. So, starting the Empyrean and all the new models that we'll be launching this year, uh, all our products will be made in Romania. Wow. So, the whole assembly and uh, testing is done basically in the same facility where the products are designed. Mm -hmm. uh, this makes a very big difference because when you have the engineers who design products sitting. Very near to the people who uh, take care of the assembly and testing, this ensures a continuity in the intention mm -hmm. that otherwise it would not be possible. If you have the design center somewhere, mm -hmm. and then the parts and the products will be manufactured and assembled somewhere else, you lose a lot of the initial uh, standards and intentions. Mm -hmm. And uh, Romania doesn't have an audio industry, so we're very proud that. We're the first uh, to to make audio products, mm -hmm. and uh, also yeah. proud that uh, in our new models we will try to implement as much as possible from uh, the local values, spiritual values, and also aesthetic values of our country. Mm -hmm. um, I really think that uh, now design is very international, and you cannot tell many times where. A product comes from like is it German or is it American or is it Japanese or Chinese? Because mm -hmm. the design language is uh, universal to the point of lacking character, yeah. and uh, we think it's really worth keeping the tradition, the aesthetic, the, the aesthetic connected to arts and form of each region. So. Mm -hmm. uh, You know, for example, if you have a product that is made in Thailand by a Thai company, mm -hmm. when you have a country like Thailand with such a strong visual identity, mm -hmm. it would be beautiful to have that in objects. Yeah. And um, and I hope I'll see that someday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, now we're 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 trying to to make our products have some uh, character mm -hmm. that is not. Um, Universal, let's say. Yeah. Same like any other product from any other country. So, how many people in your design team now? In my design team, uh, we're four, five people uh, with engineer together, and uh, we're working uh, on many different headphone projects and even some other type of products. Um, We're we're interested in in other fields as well, and we're trying to make some other things as well that hopefully we can uh, have in the market maybe in two years or so. Uh, not headphone related, not music related, but uh, it, this is because our brag our our background is uh, product design, mm -hmm. is not business. Mm -hmm. So the passion to make things uh, is still there, mm -hmm. and uh, we love headphones. We love doing headphones, but. We sometimes want to do maybe something else as well. Okay. ครับก็นั่นก็คงไม่เห็นเรื่องราวของเมเซแล้วก็ปัจฉิยาของบริษัทเขาครับครับก็ไม่แปลกใจที่ทำไมของเขาทำมาเนี่ยนอกจากตูดีใส่สบายแล้ว high quality ใช่แล้ว consistency จริงเรื่องของการออกแบบความปราณีตนะครับในส่วนของตัวหูฟังแม้แต่ว่าจะเป็นรุ่นเริ่มต้นเองก็ตามก็ถือว่าเป็นตัวที่มีงานออกแบบที่สวยมากนะครับก็ทีมงานเขาถือว่าเป็นทีมงานที่ดีไซน์เก่งมากใช่ครับแล้วก็ยิ่งการที่จะมูฟการผลิตทุกอย่างมาไว้ที่โรมาเนียเนี่ยคือการควบคุมคุณภาพตีเนี่ยผมว่าเป็นการตัดสินใจที่แบบโชว์ให้เห็นนะว่าคือเขาไม่ได้เป็นบริษัทที่จะตัดคอเพื่อเอาโปรฟิตอย่างเดียวแต่เขาสนใจจริงๆว่าของที่เขาทำมาเนี่ยต้องสุดทุกด้านเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยในเรื่องของคุณภาพตีนะครับทั้งในเรื่องเสียงรูปลักษณ์ของตัวสินค้ารวมถึงตัวการพัฒนาสินค้าในแต่ละตัวของเขาเนี่ยเรียกได้ว่ามีความน่าสนใจทั้งนั้นเลยนะครับแล้วก็มันก็มีสตอรี่ของมันนะครับในแต่ละรุ่นของเขาเองด้วยนะฮะครับผม
ครับก็วันนี้ก็คงต้องขอขอบคุณคุณอาจารย์ขอบคุณ Thank you very much for coming Thank today and we hope that we gonna see you soon later <laughs> okay ครับผมก็วันนี้ต้องขอขอบคุณทางมั่นคงแล้วก็ทางทีมงานด้วยนะครับ,รบที่ได้ให้โอกาสทางเราเนี่ยามาเปิดเผยเรื่องราวของเมเซ่บริษัทถูกฟังที่ผมว่าตอนนี้ก็ใช้คำว่าร้อนแรงต่อเนื่องตลอดนะครับผมแล้วก็หวังว่าท่านผู้ชมที่ได้ฟังเรื่องราวแล้วเราคิดว่าเมเซ่เนี่ยเป็นผลิตภัณฑ์ที่คู่ควรแก่ท่านเนี่ยก็ขอเชิญมาลองทดลองฟังได้นะครับผมก็ที่ร้านมั่นคงแกจเจตเนี่ยก็จะมีตัวเดโมนะครับให้ทุกท่านที่สนใจสามารถเข้ามาทดลองได้ไม่ว่าจะเป็นรุ่นเริ่มต้นนะครับอย่าง12คลาสสิก V2 เป็นตัวลายโซโล่ลายเพนต้ารวมถึงตัวเอ็มพิเรียนด้วยนะครับซึ่งก็จะมีให้ลองอยู่ที่สาขาสยามพารากอนแล้วก็สาขาอัมรีพาซาด้วยนะครับแล้วก็ถือว่าวันนี้นะครับก็ได้รู้อะไรหลายอย่างเลยนะครต้องขอบคุณทั้งพิกิจแล้วก็คุณอัตเดโอมากๆนะครับผมแล้วก็เดี๋ยวถ้าเกิดว่ามีสินค้าใหม่หรือว่ามีข่าวความคืบหน้าอะไรเกี่ยวกับตัวโปรดักต์ของแบรนด์เมเซอร์ออดิโอเนี่ยเดี๋ยวเราก็จะมาอัปเดตให้ทราบอีกทีละกันนะฮะครับผมโอเคนะครับวันนี้ก็ขอบคุณคุณผู้ชมทุกท่านมากๆเลยนะฮะที่เข้ามาติดตามรับชมกันนะฮะแล้วเดี๋ยวกลับมาพบกับรีวิวและบทความอื่นๆของมันคงแกเจนได้ในคลิปต่อไปนะครับวันนี้ขอบคุณมากๆสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ